I mean, I hop in my car, and uh, at, actually that's how I got my speeding ticket, was I live on um, a corner property. It's 45 miles an hour on the main road, it's 25 miles an hour on the side road, and anytime I do something on the car, I think, okay, I'm gonna test it in the driveway with the wheels jacked off the ground, make sure everything works right. It does, cool, okay, now I'll test it in my driveway, everything's still working right, great. Um, then after that, I just go down the side road, just, you know, make sure everything's running properly. Um, and after I had installed an ammeter, um, I was looking at that, and an ammeter is just a device that shows how much energy you're using at any moment in time. So I'm going down the street, and this is an area where everybody rides their bikes and walks their dogs. So I'm looking at, you know, I'm watching out for pedestrians. Um, I'm watching my ammeter. What I wasn't watching was my speedometer. So I get down a little further. Woo, woo, woo! And I, I get pulled over. Um, and of course the cop didn't say, do you know how fast you're going? He was basically, here you're speeding. And down there, it was actually a 15 mile per hour zone, believe it or not. And no, it's not a school zone or anything like that. It's a rich people lake house zone, period. That's all there is to it there. Um, I, I said something, something like, but officer, I don't even have an engine in the car. And he said, yeah, yeah, I've heard that one before. I'm like, what? No, you haven't. So I end up going to traffic court. And traffic court was the day after Christmas, which I thought was crazy that they'd even do it on that day. And uh, out of a quirk of luck, I end up being the last to go before the judge. And he's like, oh, Mr. Nelson, I see you have a speeding ticket here. Got anything to say for yourself? Oh, by the way, this guy's name was Judge Stern. So hmm, it was a very stern judge up there. I said, uh, yes, Your Honor, um, uh, it's an electric car. I built myself. It doesn't even have an engine in it. And what, really? So sure enough, I pull out photos. I show them some of these photos I've been showing you. And she goes, wow. Never heard anybody getting a speeding ticket in an electric car before. God, not in my courtroom, he doesn't. Uh. So he gave me a uh, faulty speedometer ticket. And then he said, um, <laughs> let's see, you're the last one to go before me here. So let's um, tell you what, you go pay the fine. I'm going to get my galoshes. Yes, galoshes is all slushy winter weather outside. We're going to go across the street to the newspaper office. We need to get a story done on this. <laughs> Oh, God, no, really? No. <laughs> yes, really. Judge Stern, of course. So we go over there, and I thought I'd dodge the bullet because there was like nobody around, you know, day after Christmas. And the receptionist says, Well, but uh, the editor's here. Oh, we go see the editor. Judge, glad to see you. I've been wanting to do a story about the weirdest, you know, court cases you've ever had. Well, that's perfect. I got this guy. He just got a <laughs> speeding ticket in his electric car. Oh, God, no. It <coughs> wake up, wake up, you know. So it was, it was certainly an adventure. I've had a lot of adventures in my car, met a lot of meet new people. Um, <coughs> although everything on this car is manual, um, it, it had power brakes, oh, so I had to replace that with um, uh, a little pump and an air canister. I mean, that was kind of the most complicated, wacky thing that I had to do on my car. Other than um, go through emissions. We have emissions in my area. Uh, that was the toughest thing I had to do. I had to hunt for about two months to find the right guy to talk to and take my car down for a visual inspection. And basically, I drove my car and popped the hood. The guy walks over, looks down. Yep, there's no engine in there. <laughs> he scribbled his initials on one page, slapped it in a fax machine, sent it off to the state capitol, says, you're good, here's my car, do you ever have trouble again? Call me. That's it, that's it. But I'm sure you all have lots of questions. We don't have a whole lot of time here. Although I did get my uh, photo of my car with the Wienermobile one time. I just, I mean, an electric car isn't for everybody. Uh, yeah, but, um, and there's electric motorcycles. Um, the one, the yellow one, that's my electric motorcycle. That's another electric motorcycle somebody else built. Here's a classic 1970s electric car. These things are 30 years old. They still run, they don't rust. It's an aluminum frame and a plastic body. They're amazing. Fun little cars. Electric bikes, there's a lot of cool things out there. But let's have you shoot with some questions. Right back here. What do you do for heat? Uh, heat, yes. Um, heat is very good in the summer. And the air conditioning's uh, great in the winter. <laughs> but uh, seriously, um, I, I thought, you know, why do I even want to try to make this like a gas car? I'm going to make it better. 
and I already owned a small electric oil-filled radiator, a little floor stand model, just plugs into the wall, makes heat. I put that behind my passenger seat, run the extension cord out the window to a timer, and when I hop in the car in the morning in the winter, the car's already warm. Steering wheel, seats, glass, everything's warm. I unplug it. I drive. The thermal mass of that heater, the oil in it, stays warm for oh, a good 10 minutes or so. And you know, I'm, I use this for short trips mostly. It's fine. It's more than enough. And you know, just wear a jacket. So. <coughs> All oh, right. Um, on six used batteries that would have just gone out to get recycled anyways, this car will do about 20 miles with about a 45 mile per hour top speed. With 12 six volt batteries in it, which is a lot of fun to drive, but I didn't have any cargo space, um, it would do an estimated 75 mile per hour top speed in about a 30 mile range. Now if I was using new batteries, I'd be able to do probably 40 miles. A uh, typical home-built electric car conversion using lead-acid batteries will usually do 40, 50 miles, something like that. And with the newer style of batteries, lithium-ion and things like that, uh, potentially you could build your own car that could have a fantastic range. It's just that right now those are, those are pretty expensive, but they will get cheaper as the commercially available electric cars come out. Um, that's the voltage. If you have one 12 volt battery, you have 12 volts. If you have two 12 volt batteries, one to the next, negative to positive connections, you have 24 volts. The more volts, the faster it makes the motor spin. Um, so essentially, the more batteries, the merrier, the more fun the car is going to be. Uh, how many miles have you put on this car? Like, uh, 3,227. Okay. Um, I reset the odometer in the car after I converted it. Um, now, that's only the equivalent of about one oil change, but it's, it's a zillion trips. You know, all those times where you just hop in the car to, you know, run out to the grocery store, things like that, your engine never even gets warm. This car replaces all those short little trips. And on long trips, I, I still use a, a gasoline vehicle. I've got a pickup truck that I use for hauling firewood and uh, moving equipment and things like that. Uh, the motor is set up so that it just spins the one direction. I use the uh, reverse gear in there. I typically drive in either second or third, but I basically put it in gear and use it like drive. First gear is so insanely powerful yet slow that it's absolutely useless unless you're pulling a, a load of firewood up a 45 degree hill. Um, third will do any speed from zero to 45 miles an hour without shifting. It just, it has more torque, it has more of a range of speed you just don't need it. Um, the clutch. Oh yeah, I, uh, most of the time I just put it in that gear to start with, and I generally I don't shift while driving. If I need to, I just do, and that's one thing that people don't get. It's like really you just shift. Yeah, yeah, because you don't have all those pistons and the flywheel and all of that pushing on the transmission. And the other thing is with an electric motor, when you come to a stop sign the motor just stops spinning. You're not using any energy. Um, you don't need to disconnect with a clutch to you know, prevent an engine from getting killed. Uh, the motor does not stop the vehicle. This car does not have regenerative braking. A series wound motor is not an appropriate type of motor to use as a generator. Um, a lot of people do ask about regenerative brakes. If you have an AC motor, like is, uh, are in the hybrids, those, are, those work very well as generators. In general, it's going to be more efficient to let off the accelerator sooner and just ease up to a stop sign or a traffic light than it will be to drive up to it, waste all that energy, and then try to recapture it through regenerative braking. Um, two questions, actually. The first 